Hey, this is Mike from Mag Plus, and in this video I'm going to take you through a really cool new feature we just introduced with our 3.5 update called Multi-Device Export. In short, what this feature allows you to do is create a layout once for one device, say the Apple iPad, which is the layout I have here, and automatically transfer that layout to new templates sized for other devices, like the Apple iPhone or the Kindle Fire. It basically saves you the step of opening up another template, copy and pasting everything over, resizing it, and then exporting. It's doing all that part of it for you. So let me show you how it works. Here in the 3.5 plugin, you'll notice that there is a new area down in the bottom that says More Devices. Now, if I don't want a multi device export, I can completely ignore this and continue to work with the plugin as I always have. But if I check this little arrow next to more devices, you'll see that now I get a list of all the devices that MagPlus supports, both iPads, the iPhone 4, the Kindle Fire or Android 7-inch size tablet, and the Android tablets that are 1280 by 800, which is most 10-inch devices. Now, if when you first open the plugin you can't see all of these, it may just be that your window needs to be expanded. You can always grab the corner of your plugin window and pull it down to see all the content that's there. Now, in order to use multi-device export, it's really pretty simple. All I do is check the box next to the devices that I want to create new layouts for. In this case, I'll do all of them just so you can see what those look like. Then I decide the rule by which the content is going to change when I move it over to this new template. And we started pretty simply. There's only two options here. We'll expand this over time, but to begin with, we have a choice of scale or center. Scale is the one you're probably going to use most often, and what that will do is, quite simply, scale the content that's on this layout for the new size template that you're working with. So if you're going to the iPhone 4, it's going to make it quite a bit smaller. Now it's important to note that the scaling happens according to the page size, not to your guides. You'll notice when we look at the other templates that the safe area, that is the area here that's always visible in the middle, will change pretty considerably on some of these other devices because the aspect ratio is different. The system is only going to scale for the actual page itself so that if you have, say, a full screen photo like this one, it'll scale appropriately, but you may end up having to move some other elements around. The great thing about multi-device export is that what it does is create new InDesign documents for you that you can then go into and tweak as you want to make sure that your layout is really optimized for those other devices. A couple of other columns here in my plugin. This T column is the template. Now, by default, when you run the Mag Plus installer, it'll put the templates in a default location. If you go into your Applications folder, you'll see a folder called Mag Plus that gets created when you run the installer. And inside that, you'll see Mag Plus templates and a folder for each one of the devices we support with a help template, a standard creative template, and a table of contents template for the pop up TOC that you can make. Now, if you want to move these templates somewhere else, you can go into the Settings palette, down to Device Templates. Again, I need to expand my plugin here a little bit to see them all. And I can change the default location of each one of these templates, both the Device Template, the Standard Creative one, and the Table of Contents one, uh, if I want to move them somewhere else. By default, however, the system's just going to look in that spot, Applications, Mag Plus, Mag Plus Templates. So my T column here is if I want to just temporarily override that location. If I want to permanently override that location, I change it here in my settings. Most people will be able to ignore this because it'll automatically point to where it needs to. The next column here, the O column, if I have this checked, what the system's going to do is after it creates that new InDesign document for the new device, it's going to leave that open for me so that I can jump right into it. If I have that unchecked, it'll still create the document. I'll just have to go open it myself later. Finally, the V column is for going one step beyond the InDesign document creation all the way to exporting that vertical. It's exactly the same as if you had checked the export button up here in the standard MagPlus workflow. This will export to an issue folder so that you can then work with it in the production tool. Now, this is a really helpful thing for when you want to create Apple iPad and iPad Retina versions of your issue with just one step. Now all I have to do is make sure my iPad Retina box is checked, and then check the V column for both my current device, the iPad, and the Retina. What this is going to do then is create, two create an extra InDesign document. I've already created my iPad one. It'll create one for the iPad Retina 
and it will export it. So I'll end up with two issue folders, one for iPad and one for Retina, that I can then make separate MIBs out of and have both my optimized versions. For these other devices, I'm gonna leave these unchecked for now because I suspect I'm gonna to wanna to go in and tweak those InDesign files a little bit before I do the final export on it. Now before I click the export, a note about folder structure. Because this is automatically creating some files, it's going to automatically create some folders for you as well. So it's important that you set up your folder structure in the right way so everything makes sense and ends up where you expect it to. You can see here I've created a July issue folder. And inside I've created a folder for all of my InDesign files. Now I have a separate folder here for the issue folders. This is going to be my parent issue folder where all of my subsequent issue folders specific to device are going to go. Now I've started and created one for the Apple iPad, which is the first device I'm working for, but I haven't put anything in it yet. I'll let the system do that. When I name these folders, it's important that I use the same name as the plugin does. So here you can see it's Apple iPad with a capital A, capital P. As long as I name it the same way, the system will recognize that this is where all the iPad verticals go. Or in the case of my InDesign documents, you can see that I've also created a folder for Apple iPad and put all of my InDesign documents in that. Now the system will automatically create new folders for all of my other check devices. So let's hit export and you'll see what I mean. Here I got a failed message. Now this is important. I did this on purpose, believe it or not. If you get a failed message like this, you'll be able to tap on it and see what the problem was, why you got a failure down here below. The problem is that I didn't set a valid issue folder. This was already pointing to some old issue folder that's somewhere else. And so if it doesn't see a valid issue folder and I'm asking it to do an export, it's going to give me an error. So I can go ahead and close that. And now let's go up and pick the right issue folder. Now because I've started with my Apple iPad, I'm going to go into issue folders and I'm going to pick Apple iPad. Now let's try it again. Now you can see it's moving forward with the export. The dialog box on top is our standard vertical export dialog box that you recognize. It's doing that for both the iPad and the iPad Retina. And below you can see a little status window on the other export, on the InDesign creation process that's happening here as well. Now you can see it's moving on to the iPhone, the Kindle Fire, and the Android, and it's opening up those documents in the back. Now I get my progress report, my export report, and you can see everything was okay. And now if I click on one of these uh, devices, it'll show me the processing succeeded, and it's gonna show me where it put that InDesign file in case you get confused and you're just not sure where it might have ended up. Let's jump back out and look at that issue structure, to, that folder structure to see where everything went. Now you'll see that inside this presentation styles folder, where all of my other layouts were, Here's all my layouts I had started to build for the July issue. I would put them inside a folder called Apple iPad. So what the system did is go up a level and create new folders for each one of the devices. So now you can see I'm going to have a set of InDesign documents for my Android tablet, one for my Apple iPad, and so on. Now here I've decided to put these in subfolders, but I could also put them here. The important thing to know is that it'll go up one level from where the InDesign file is and create new device specific folders so that everything ends up in this kind of a structure. You can see the same thing happened here in my issue folders. Now I'd already created my Apple iPad folder. So inside there, I got my exported vertical. The system automatically created my iPad retina folder. And here I've got my verticals for that. So when I go into my production tool, if I want to produce my Apple iPad MIB, I just point to this Apple iPad folder. Later, I can point to my Apple iPad Retina folder and create my Retina MIB. Now let's go back and take a look at our layouts. Now I chose scale for everything here, so let's see how that ended up. Here in my Apple iPad layout, you can see that the text, the body text, was 10 and a half over 12 point. If I jump out here to my iPhone layout, let me zoom out a little bit, you can see that this text is about four over four and a half. It's scaled everything down. You can also see that it didn't move things relative to these guides, but rather to the page. So my, my background photo here looks pretty good if I turn on my device guides here to see how everything's going to show up. But you can see I'm probably going to want to grab this group of text boxes and probably scoot them in a little bit. Same thing with this up here. 
That's the kind of little tweaking you're going to want to do before you go to that final export. If you do multiple exports, if you don't like this and you close things down, it'll simply rewrite over the folders. You can see here if I go to my Kindle Fire that my visible area, always visible area, is quite a bit smaller because of the very different aspect ratio of this. And finally, let's jump out to our Android 1280 by 800 where, again, I might need to do a little bit of tweaking. So that's multi-device export. Uh, we really hope you enjoy it. As we say, we'll be expanding this over time. If you have any comments or questions, you can always find more at support.magplus.com.